Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and happy MCAT Day. Yes, it is MCAT Day. The city of Missoula proclaimed on Monday, May 1st, that today is MCAT Day to celebrate our 27th anniversary, which happened on April um, 22nd, 23rd, around er, on Earth Day. Um, MCAT will be having an anniversary party tonight from 5 to 8 p.m. You guys are welcome to come down. But if you uh, miss the MCAT party, we still have our orientation uh, next Wednesday, May 10th, from 5.30 to about 6.30, 7 o'clock, depending upon how uh, fast we go and how uh, we streamline the uh, orientation. So get uh, no more. you can learn more about MCAT by going on to MCAT.org. I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. You have your flagship Friday video of the week, which highlights the kids from Hellgate High School. Um, and we do a little parody of Whiplash from Whiplash. Uh, we have art clips. Um, it's first Friday, so I'll have your art guide for you guys as well. I got uh, Ali Fontenot and Hayden um, Groats from the Watchins Children's Shelter talking about, talking about Bike for Shelter. But I got some news and I got some weather to talk about for, your, for today, for your, art, uh, for your out and about today. Um, it's going to be a high 83 degrees outside. It is currently 45, so it's only going to get warmer. Um, your low is going to be 50 tonight with the 80% chance of shower. So you may need to wear a nice little spring um, shower jacket. Um, I don't even know if that's a thing, but uh, your uh, Saturday is going to be a high of 69, a low of 45. It's going to be raining pretty much all throughout the weekend. But then by Monday, th hopefully things will start clearing up. Um, for that day as well, but we might have stayed off some of that uh, thunder and lightning that was uh, was said it was going to happen tonight and tomorrow as well. But we might actually get through this. Um, so um, come on down to uh, Downtown Dance Collective at uh, 121 West Main Street tonight from 5 to 8 o'clock. Our uh, our uh, speeches and Mayor John Engen will show up around 6 p.m. to talk all sorts of things about MCAT and how MCAT has helped um, th the city of Missoula. Um, moving on, I got some news item for you guys. If you haven't already heard that yesterday, the uh, um, the the, um, the Republican majority House approved the um, uh, let's see the um, the legislation of the U.S. House approved the uh, um, the repeal and replacement of Obamacare, so it has to go to the Senate next time. But in the state of Montana, um, the, this legislation could spell the end of Medicaid expansion in states like Montana. Cleared the U.S. House w with a very close vote. Some are calling on Montana senators to defend Republican plan to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, the Montana Budget and Policy Center, a nonprofit that researches budget, tax, and economic issues, said Thursday that the revived version of American Health Care Act would effectively end Medicaid expansion in Montana, which has extended coverage to more than 70,000 people. With th this in place, states would have to come up with $251 million on their own to cover Medicaid. What did I tell you? So uh, I, I told you this on Wednesday during uh, kind of like my opinion based on the uh, news article uh, is that um, that Trump was uh, mentioning uh, something about the Civil War that it shouldn't have happened. As I, I told you, that was a diversion, uh, diversionary tactic to get people kind of off the train while while they were talking about Medicaid and uh, all this Medicare stuff as well. Uh, okay. Anyways, the bill of the American Healthcare Act will be presented to the Senate soon, according to NPR.org. With the majority of Republicans who voted in favor of this repeal and replacement, the de Democrats plan to use this against them in the ne next midterm elections. In national news. Um, one week ago, uh, around this time, um, thousands of people seeking a luxurious island uh, retreat, uh, retreat were uh, preparing for a trip to Exuma Island in the Bahamas to attend the Fire Festival. Unfortunately, they didn't know that the bands uh, weren't paid, so the bands didn't show up, and um, they didn't have any food or uh, amenities. In there uh, on the island, so thousands of people were stranded on a island uh, without any uh, communication to get out of there. So um, imagine you go on a tropical vacation party, and when you get there, no one is there to play music or entertain. You could even 
hook you can, you couldn't even hook up an iPhone, iPad, charger or anything to any of the sound systems and um and there's definitely no way off the island. So many of the uh people in the from the, that went to the fire festival uh are doing a class action lawsuit against the organizers organizer uh, organizers um the New York's uh, federal second district court yesterday covers much of the same ground as the first, citing social media posts of poor conditions and a Wall Street Journal report on this failure to pay performers filed this past Sunday. The new suit also names Grant um, Margolin, the event's marketing director, as defendant and alleges negligence, fraud, and misrepresentation of and violation of consumer protection laws of all 50 states. Um, back in local news, uh, we'll talk about something that's happening in Missoula, specifically at the uh, one of the MCPS schools, which is Hellgate High School. Hellgate High School Auditorium will um, rename after Bolton Rothwell, who taught at the school's drama program for over 17 years. According to the Missoulian, the renaming will take place officially today. Bolton died of leukemia back in 2012. The pitch to rename the auditorium came soon after, but former Superintendent Al Capasso put a stop to that. Um, Many of the reasons why they put a stop to it, because they didn't know whether or not uh, a lot of the chunk of the Hellgate High School would actually be there when they're doing um, updates and repairs to the infrastructure, and they're all basing it on the bond that passed a couple years ago of the high school and um, um, grade school buildings that they're all replacing right now, and they hope to be done with replacing all these by 2020. But recently, with a lot of help with the teachers at Hellgate who praise Bolton for helping students come out of their shells and succeed, it's only fitting that they should have a section of the school devoted to his memory. And that pretty much wraps up for your events. I have a couple guests on today, so I'm not going to keep them waiting. Um, I, have a br I have another art clip, and um, let's start off with Robert Griffith who is doing an art installation at the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and I have other art installations for this, and these are all college students at the, uh, uh, at the University of Montana trying to get their BFA in arts. Hey guys, we're back here with uh, Allie and Hayden. Sorry, I had, like looked at my cheat notes for it real quick. But you guys are here from the uh, Watchins Children's Shelter, and you're here to talk about Bike for Shelter. We are. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Hi, so again. let's talk about Bike for Shelter. You guys do this annually. And what is Bike for Shelter for those of uh, those at home who don't know what Bike for Shelter is? Yeah, so Bike for Shelter um, is a big family-friendly event, something there for everybody. We do an 11-mile bike ride and a 2-mile bike ride for little kids. Um, and there's so much there to do. There's pony rides, we've got snow cones, cotton candy, bounce houses. Face painting uh, is always really face popular. Face painting. Uh, Montana Rail Link puts on a huge barbecue every year for us. Um, so there's something there for everybody. It's really fun. Music. Yeah, music. We'll have a DJ. It's cool. awesome. Yeah. Cool. And where is it 
um, mm -hmm. specifically located? Where's the starting point? Oh yeah, so uh, community medical parking lot uh, right across from our fort shelter, which is the really cool part about it. You'll be riding from one of our houses um, all the way to our second house on Buckhouse Lane. Cool. So and you'll start in the community medical parking lot. And you said that um, also before the interview, you also mentioned that there's going to be like a barbecue, like there's going to be food and everything. Yep, at the event, Montana Rail Link will do a big barbecue for everybody. So they'll do the ride, everybody gets back around 11 ish, and then all the festivities will be started, and Montana Rail Link will start cooking everything. Cool. Yep. And uh, you have a, plenty of sponsors. Like, let's just take a look at your yeah. shirt. You're just kind of showing off. It's like, you got, you have like, <laughs> See, so many different shirts. Short, yeah, yeah. Uh, our premier sponsor, um, as Hayden already mentioned, is Montana mm -hmm. Rail Link, and then Pepsi comes out, Cherry Creek Media, Media, Blackfoot Telecommunications, Diversified Plastics, and KPAX. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of we're support. Very, we're very lucky. And Montana Rail, Rail Link has been there from the very beginning. They have. They've really been a big supporter of the shelter and the kids at the shelter, and we're we're very thankful. In fact, the entire community has been very supportive of the shelter. And for those of you out there that don't know that we do, um, Watson Children's Shelter is an emergency shelter for children who have been removed from the home due to abuse or neglect. And we're unfortunately seeing uh, an increase of child abuse and neglect across the state and here in Missoula, Western Montana. So the need for our services is more important than ever. And this is one of our major fundraisers. So we really encourage people to come out, support the event, support the kids and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was uh, watching uh, uh, some city council not too long ago and they were mm -hmm. mentioning that, that um, domestic, uh, there have been a lot more domestic calls in, to 911. That's like the mm -hmm. highest thing in Missoula's domestic violence calls. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine, it's always good to have a place like Washington Children's Shelter to help kids who uh, need a temporary housing. Yeah, it's very true. So uh, tell us the um, kind of uh, like uh, the importance of Washington Children's Shelter for the community in the community. Well, we're one of um, three emergency shelters of our type in the state, and we're the only emergency shelter in Western Montana. We have 24 kids in our care um, at any one time, and pretty much we've been at capacity for the most part of going on about four years. So. Um, if, if Watson Children's Shelter wasn't around, then police and social workers would have to place children in other places that may not be right. appropriate. But um, we're fortunate Watson has been around for about 40 years at this point, and uh, we're very lucky that we have the shelter in our community. Yeah. And this, uh, this event that's coming up, um, can you tell us a little bit uh, more about this event, when, where, and where people can get more information? Oh, yes. Gosh, we shouldn't forget that. <laughs> I'm coming up on Saturday, May 13th, so it's a week from tomorrow, uh, out at Community Medical Center, as Hayden mentioned. You can register online until May 10th and get a little discount there. Um, otherwise, you can shop on the day of the event again, May 13th, out at Community Medical Center. Registration starts at 8 a.m and the 11 mile bike ride starts at 9.30, then the festivities go to about one o'clock. Cool, and so we're looking at your website right now. Is there anything that you wanna highlight on your website? Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe if someone doesn't know how to get to, um, if they wanna learn more about the event, if you click special events right there, and then click bike for shelter, uh, right there um, at the top, there'll be, um, Home, Links register to, to do everything. You can view all our sponsors. Uh, Raisin Ride is a really cool thing that people can do. A raisin Ride. Yeah. So if they want to <laughs> participate in the event, they can. If they want to, and they want to help the shelter at the same time, they can raise one hundred and fifty dollars, win um, a really cool custom hoodie, um, and then um, click on they it. Get we can see the hoodie. Yeah, can the hoodie's the hoodie. really cool. We went with Grizz colors this year. Oh, what, what, if you what click on at? that link, it'll take you. Which Raisin link? Ride, click that right there, yeah. Raisin Ride. Yeah, perfect. And oh. if you click the hoodie itself, you can zoom in and see it's pretty cool. Um, oh. Yeah, the front's got a... There That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, our intern designed it this year. She did a great job. Um, but yeah, so Raisin Ride's a cool way for you to help the shelter and then also have fun. So you raise $150 or more. And then you get to come to the event for free and get a cool hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. So you have lots of merch. You got lots of uh, fun activities yep. for a lot of kids and families to yep. come on down to help support the Washington Children's Shelter. It's going to be at Community Medical next Saturday. Yeah. Is, uh, One more thing. 
before I forget, we are still looking for volunteers for the yes. event. And there is a link on the website as well for volunteers. We're looking for some people to help out on the bike route. Uh, pretty simple, a couple hours of your time on Saturday morning. So if you, if you can't, or if you don't want to participate in the bike ride, but like to help us out, we would uh, really appreciate volunteers. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, is there anything else you guys want to say? I think that's about it. We thank got it you. All. Thanks, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Once again, um, Community Medical will be hosting um, Bike for Shelter by the Washington's Children's Shelter next Saturday, May 13th. 13th. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. I You're really welcome. Yeah, see ya. I just want to thank Rick Phillips for providing those new art clips. A lot of art clips from the uh, um, Gallery of the Visual Arts will be done by uh, May 12th, next Friday. So you only have one more week to check out the Gallery of the Visual Arts. I suggest you don't go on the last day because they start cleaning up on the day of when the art exhibit closes. So you only have maybe until next Thursday, May 11th, to actually check out a lot of these student artists at the Gallery of Visual Arts, which is in the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. And I know that. Uh, some, it's better, it, 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 I think it's more engaging when I actually talk at the camera because I'm always like down here and be like, uh, read, read words and stuff. But let's talk about, I don't know, I'm just doing this a lot. I'm just going to be hitting a whole bunch of things today because um, MCAT's ha having a little party. Um, you guys are invited. Come on down. It's going to be from 5 to 8 o'clock and it'll be great. We'll have food, we'll have drinks, we'll have VR, so we have some virtual reality stuff. So we'll be setting up pretty much all day at the Downtown Dance Collective, and then we'll have the party and the big event. So it, the part you don't want to miss is from 6 to about 7 o'clock, where we have a bunch of speakers talking about how wonderful MCAT is, and you also can give some feedback back to, back, 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 back to MCAT and talk about what MCAT can do for you and what can MCAT can do the, for the community. Um, we do already so much for the community, which includes uh, programming, um, on our channel, so if you guys are uh, interested in finding out more information, you go to MCAT.org. We have a really awesome bike that we're going to be raffling off. So if you see this bike, um, this bike you can walk away with or ride away with. Uh, be sure just not to uh, ride your bike on the sidewalk or I will be really angry at you. But regardless of that, um, you guys can win this bike. It's wonderful. It's purple. It's provided by the uh, um, Free Cycles. Of Missoula, so you guys can check that out. Um, go to freecycles.org to find out more information about free cycles. Um, just giving a little plug for them. If you want to find out more information about my morning show, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Um, we, I do a morning show on MCAT, and I highlight a lot of things that are happening in Missoula, and I highlight a lot of things that are happening within MCAT, including brand new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT this weekend. And here is a little taste of what you guys can walk away with. Uh, we got Provost Lecture Series. We, are, um, we got an artist talk from the Missouri Art Museum. Um, it's uh, Molly Murphy, um, who's going to be, who's has an uh, uh, ex 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 exhibit, exhibit at the uh, exhibition 
exhibit at the Missouri Art Museum. You guys can check that out. Um, there's a community lecture series. We got wilderness issues lecture series. All that is happening, and you can watch that um, anytime on MCAT.org, or you can wait until watch them this weekend on MCAT Channel 190. The, the, the really negative experience I had that in a lot of respects set me free was the very first piece that I showed was a cradle board. Um, I won best of show at the herd, and, um, which is a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. The only uh, major native show that's bigger than that is Santa Fe. And, um, but in my background, I'm not tribally enrolled. My mother was given up for adoption and adopted off reservation. And when she went to go get re-enrolled later as an adult, um, they imposed a three-year residency requirement, which if you've ever heard of Pine Ridge Reservation, is not probably somewhere you want to go on vacation for three years. Um, um, families, as you can imagine, are extremely important. Um, and they're really, uh, really essential part of the, uh, of the life, uh, extended families and, and, and so forth. Um, and the church, or the mosque, um, either Catholic Church, Orthodox Church, there's also Lutheran, or um, Sunni Muslims, which are the four recognized religions, all the others, as Solomon said, are, are um, repressed. Um, the, so the church plays a big, another central part of the community. And I think the fundamental problem is that we have, uh, uh, well, there's several problems. One is that change is difficult for the human brain. We can think in three dimensions, not n dimensions. And so it's just inherently a hard thing to do to manage for change. But that might not be solvable, characteristics of the human brain. But what is solvable, I think, is bringing a higher knowledge base of the ecology of whatever kind of ecosystem you're working on to your restoration or your management projects. And I think if we have a better basis in ecological theory, in the practice of ecological restoration, we're gonna be making better decisions and may having better outcomes. I, I wanna close by saying uh, heart disease is a top public health concern. We have a society that is physically disengaged, very immobile as a group, and it's costing us money, it's costing us quality of life. The human toll is immeasurable. Exercise, for the most part, is a panacea of health. It won't let you live forever, but it will let you live much longer. And I've given you some anecdotal evidence, little snippets of how aging can reverse on a cellular level, on a single bout of exercise, can alter the aging process. Uh, and I would uh, stop at this point to also add that uh, in this discussion, I do not uh, speak for uh, tribes or First Nations. Um, uh, regarding uh, the Ethics and Treaty Project, um, there are two foundations for our work. One is the tools that we uh, use every day in our ethics consultation services uh, in hospitals. Um, and the second is the Columbia River Pastoral Letter. Hey guys, welcome back. And now it's time for some city council. Don't worry, I'll keep it brief. Um, so in city council, um, Higgins Bridge is getting a $11.6 million facelift with improving sidewalks and non-motorized travel across the bridge, a plan that was submitted by MDT back in 2014. And now they are coming up with a, to put a plan in place to move forward on this along with other bridge projects that will be going over the Clark Fork River. Jessica Morris talks about the current status of the uh, Higgins Street Bridge, and this is what she had to say. 1962, it's currently considered to be structurally deficient and functionally obsolete. Structurally deficient does not mean that it's going to fall into the river um, or that it's dangerous, but it means that it needs to be um, rehabbed and, and receive some care. Functionally obsolete is just a fancy way of saying that the current facilities are do not meet the current standards um, in terms of many things such as the railing heights, the lane widths, the, the sidewalk widths, bike lane widths, all of those things. So it's currently an urban minor arterial and the speed limit is 25 miles per hour. We have some statistics on the Average annual daily vehicle trips. As All right, so um, I'll get into a little more of the statistics on the uh, daily travel trips. And the average car uh, travels across Higgins Bridge uh, roughly 14,000 times 
on a weekday, while bike pedestrian travel is about 3,500 folks. Uh, over the last five uh, years, vehicle travel has actually decreased while pedestrian bike has increased over the Higgins Bridge. The city would not exceed $1.6 million for this project, so MDT will be uh, fronting the project for $10 million, while uh, the city of Missoula will be doing $1.6 million, and also stating in this uh, particular meeting that they said that they will not exceed $1.6 million no matter what happens. And if they ever go over, MDT, Montana uh, Department of Transportation, will uh, d do the brunt of the cost if it has to increase. Um, John Wilson, he talks a little bit more about strategy for replacement and repair. And this is what he had to say. I think what Jessica was getting at earlier is, is even though um, Russell Street is scheduled to be closed in fiscal years 18 and 19 with that project, that... Um, that plan is to keep the existing structure open the first year, build the, the east side half new, and then decommission the existing structure on Russell Street and reconstruct that as new. So, you, so you're doing it in half. So Russell Street will continue to receive traffic and, and won't be closed down at any point. All right, so just letting you guys know, um, here are the uh, slated projects for uh, bridge replacement and repair. Uh, fall 2017, Madison will complete the bridge. Uh, fall eight, uh, 2018, between 2018 and 2019, Russell Bridge will finally be replaced. Good news. Uh, 2020, or maybe even earlier, that's when Higgins will be done. And that is your bridge report. Next Monday, the city of Missoula will have a public hearing on the Fox site for development. They will be a uh, sum up of the last two weeks of the land use and planning meetings where they had, uh, where they will close a portion of Front Street from Broadway in which people have to go through Owen Street instead of that Front Street direct from Broadway. Uh, May 8th, 7 p.m. in the city council chambers. Um, you can do a f uh, public hearing. It's going to be on the Fox site. You guys can talk about it, and you guys can find out more information by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Many things are going to be built in the site, from connecting trails under the Orange Street Bridge towards the north side of California Street Bridge, a parking garage, and a large hotel connecting to a conference center that the city will run while the hotel will run their own staff and business. Um, it looks pretty exciting to see all these changes coming up in the next three years, bridge replacements, new uh, mega buildings, uh, parking garage structures, all sorts of things happening in the downtown Missoula area. Um, you can find out more information by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a wonderful website where you can find out more information about what the city is doing and what the city is planning to do up in the future. Um, I get my information by going to your government and clicking on under city council, agenda, webcast, and minutes, but you can always use the search window to look up um, all your uh, needs on what's going on and it's a great way to stay in touch and see what kind of events are happening and check out all the softball leagues that will be starting up and have already started in the downtown Missoula area. So um, that kind of concludes your city council. I have another art clip for you guys. It is First Friday. It is all about the arts, and I'm going to continue on this little art train from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. This is Joshua R. Um, Mazias, and this is his art, um, and his art will also end on May 12th.
Hey guys, I'm back here and I'm standing like this because it's time for some art walk, talk, walking with art and talking about art. So first Friday, it's kicking off with uh, an art unveiling, new paintings by Barb Schwartz, Karst, and it's gonna be at the Radius Gallery, uh, uh, ambitious new grid paintings by award-winning local painter Barb uh, will be unveiled with much hoopla this first Friday, and it starts at five, and the C is the new XSI, uh, um, ongoing series, and this is going to be at the Radius Gallery. Um, next up is Nexus, and this is the Musical Art Museum. The Audio Family Collection is one of them that shaped more than six decades of friendships and professional artist rela artistic relationships. Let me start again. <laughs> the Audio Family Collection is one that shaped more than six decades of friendships and professional artist relationships. Meet some of the artists represented in the collection. Who knew uh, Leela and Rudy well? Senior uh, curator Brandon Reiches will be will offer a brief welcome and overview of the exhibition, which will be at 7 p.m. Uh, connect to the artists, art artists, and community of any supporters of the Missouri Art Museum on the first Friday each month from 5 to 8 p.m. and enjoy a reception with artists, live music by KGBA, KBGA. Everyone says KGBA for some reason. Uh, a no host bar and the gallery talk at 7 p.m. First Friday events are generously sponsored by the Missoulian. Um, next up, we got another art installation happening at Berkshire Hathaway Home Service Montana Project. This is the guest artist Teresa Olson. It's called My Show Montana on my mind. It's my show. Exhibits are <laughs> exhibits the use of watercolor, um, uh, pastels, inks, and collage to uh, engage the viewers in many aspects of life in our beautiful state. And you can come in to enjoy the show. Um, and this one is called Bison Moon. Next up, it, uh, Lake Ni uh, Late Night Tea. Um, this is going to be at the Lake Missoula Tea Company. It's right next to the public house, and you get to join for some tea. This is uh, art by Bob Rez and his unique piercing works of art using bold acrylics and bright colors. Currently working on at Bound by Glory Tattoo. Get to know your local tattoo artist and how he became a professional artist as well. Um, Next up, we got a uh, reception for the Eight Pillars of Joy. Um, this is Bonnie Tarsis, um, one of the uh, kind hand weaving by Bonnie, inspired by the Book of Joy, Hit Holiness, uh, the Dalai Lama, and Archbishop, uh, Archbishop um, Desmond Tutu um, discuss how to live in joy in the world full of pain and suffering, featuring scarves woven and unnetted cashmere uh, sweaters, in addition to distinctive fabrics highlighting over half a century of hand woven artistry. Um, first world problems. Um, for <laughs> first Friday with Delilah's Daydream, uh, Bathing Beauties Beads is going to do an open reception, a reception um, at Bathing Beauties featuring um, seed bead jewelry from Jessica Brewer of Delilah's Daydream. Uh, Je Jessica is a woman of many talents. Um, she when she's not designing bead woven earrings of empowerment, you will find her outdoors, perhaps attempting yoga on her horse. Um, join us for treats and visit this remarkable artist. The next one is Sussex School. I got to say, I got to love the Sussex kids because they do uh, art installation once a year and it's for the uh, sixth, seventh graders at Sussex School. The students will be displaying their uh, great watercolor works. Each piece will be available available for purchase of thirty dollars. All proceeds will go to the organization of the student's choice. Um, that's what it's called, student's choice. Um, the next up is called Over the Top, and no, it's not the um, um, Sylvester Stallone movie. Uh, Gallery seven hundred nine inside Montana Art and Framing presents Nancy Sellers Over the Top, pouring, tipping, turning, burning new acrylic paintings done with experimental techniques to create colorful intricate and intriguing surfaces. This exhibit is from May 5th to May 26th and opens today from 5 to 9 p.m. and is at 709 Ronan Street, hence the Gallery 709. So you, it's going to be at Missoula. You can call 541-7100 for more information or you can go to montanaart.com. Oil paintings by 
B. Stewart is going to be at the Betty's Divine. Uh, May's first Friday of Betty's Divine will feature the abstract uh, expressionist oil paintings of Missoula's artist B. Stewart. This series displays Stewart's common use of bold colors contained within the charcoal line, uh, escaping all recognizable imagery, leaving the viewer on their own to interpret the work. Swing by from 5 to 8 p.m. for the opening reception to check out the show and grab a treat from the Poppy Bakery. There's a lot going on for your first Friday, folks, but that was the rundown of all your first Friday events. Um, and I usually, I always miss a bunch of First Friday events as well because I usually like to associate an over the shoulder with the uh, First Friday Gallery Art Walk. You guys can go to many of the uh, galleries. You have the Three Ravens Gallery. You got uh, um, the Dana Gallery. It always has something there. Um, um, there's a bunch of other great galleries as well, but there's a bunch of other stores that are downtown in the area that you can check out. Downtown Dash Collective will have us, um, MCAT, um, will be at the place as well. But I also want to give a, s a small little plug to the flagship program who will be doing events at the uh, Clyde Coffee tonight um, from 5 to 8 p.m. And they're also going to be participating with Give Local. And I'll have a little bit more information about all the events that are happening right after your flagship Friday video of the week. So um, I'm also going to try to hit, down, hit, hit um, Clyde Coffee at... Um, 5-ish p.m. to support the flagship program because I missed their um, oval um, program, which was from 11 to 1 p.m. on Wednesday. But that's the past, and let's talk about the future. Um, here is the newest flagship Friday video of the week, inspired by the movie Whiplash. I don't know. I fell asleep, I guess. You know what you... All right, sorry about that. Um, that was like the... That was not the part of the movie I wanted you to see yet. So here is the flagship Friday video of the week. Play the note. What note? Right now. No, not that note. The note. Uh. You know this. It's on the... In the music right now. Play the note. That is not the note. That is not... Not even close to the note. Play the note. That's not the note. That is not... A note! Uh, Are you kidding me right now? Are you serious? You do realize I'm trying my hardest, right? I can't deal with this right now! Uh oh. Nope, that's not uh, Hey, how's it going? You know, my piano teacher just kind of whiplashed me. Mm, that sucks. Yeah. Jackson, I told you to get over here. I don't want to. I, I told you not to talk to strangers. Get, get over here. Nothing. You are a disgrace. You're never gonna be a successful star. You're never gonna be a piano player. You are just gonna be alone. Who in the world? You're never gonna do anything with your life. I guess. You know what you did? What did I do? You've played the perfect note! The note! I, oh, I did? You did! What, what? Do it again! Do it again! Do it again! You're, you're going to Harvard! Do you know what this means? You're one of my most successful students I have ever had! You're gonna travel the world! Come on, let's... We're going! Right now! Okay.
Hey guys, welcome back. And now let's talk about some of the events that are happening in and around Missoula. Uh, Missoula Gives is uh, part of a uh, citywide and also nationalwide um, giving to nonprofits and other organizations that help um, make the world a better place. And do the Donor Lounge here in Missoula is happening at the Florence Building, Missoula Community Foundation. Um, it's going to do be, is hosting Missoula Gives, which ha basically kicked off yesterday at 6 p.m. and it's going to continue until 6 p.m. today. And their goal is to raise thirty three hundred thousand dollars for local nonprofits in the Missoula area. So you guys can still uh, donate anytime um, online by going to missoulagives.org. Donate to your favorite nonprofit of choice. Um, also, uh, you got Holy uh, Spirit's uh, um, Church Rummage Sale. It's going to be at uh, Holy uh, Spirit. Uh, uh, ugh, I probably shouldn't. Uh, Espico, uh, Episcopal. Es Episcopal? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm, I, I have no idea how to say that. Uh, it's going to be at the church, uh, at a Holy Spirit Church. Um, Missoula um, is holding their rummage sale. It's going to be uh, today and tomorrow. Um, it's going to be uh, opens at 9 in the morning. And the Friday sale will go until 3 this afternoon. And then the si Saturday sale will be reduced prices from noon to 1 p.m. if nothing sells on the next couple days. Um, and this is going to be at um, Higgins Avenue South 130 South 6th Street, East, and you're um, welcome to do rummage sales. People do rummage sales. It's a great way to uh, help um, give money to uh, the church as well. Blood drive for the Missoula Gives. Um, um, it's going to be at the Florence Building, and you get the uh, American Red Cross. Uh, the, the American Red Cross bus will be located outside the Florence Building in downtown Missoula, preparing for the blood drive from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. To schedule an appointment, you can call Doris at 239-7655 or go to redcrossblood.org. You can enter the sponsor code Missoula Gibbs. And uh, field learning uh, presentations by UM students, the University of Montana is going to um, teach people th about the Ecosystem Science and Restoration Project 2017 student field learning, such as restoration of Mount Sentinel, um, revegetating wetlands, restoration of Nine Mile Creek, creating bull trout habitat, and more. And you guys can ch check this out. Um, it's going to be happening at the University of Montana this afternoon. Um, Here's some of your music events that are happening. Um, you got Yard Olympics first Friday Art Walk is going to be at La Petrit Autre. Um, it's going to be um, art, rock music, and you can check that out. It's starting at 5 p.m. Um, you got uh, Mark Matthews. Uh, the Continuing Journey is going to be at the E3 Convergence Gallery. They have music and they have art. Live music by George Carlton is going to be at the Ten Spoon Vineyard Winery. John Floridas is going to be at Imagination Brewing Company. Um, let's see. All Night Albi Al Alibi, first Friday, is going to be at the Missoula Wine Merchants. All Night Al oh, wait, wait, let's see. Fishbowl Friday is going to be at Monk's Band in Motion Union Club Showdown. Single Day Mile Celebration is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Uh, and then there's Brothers Gow is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's rock music. Uh, here are some of your events for your Saturday. Farmer's Market is starting on Saturday. So you guys get out there, buy some fresh veggies, um, some jam, some honey, all sorts of wonderful things and baked goods that are happening at the, the markets, the People's Market, the River Market, the and then, the, of course, the Missoula's Farmer's Market will be all starting 8 a.m., and it usually goes until 1, 1 30 p.m., so get there, get your waffles, all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, Montana State Wood Carver Show is going to be at the Missoula County Fairgrounds, and happenings and it's happening tomorrow um, from 9 to 5.30 p.m. And it all will happen on Sunday from 11 to 4. You get to see some um, wood carvings, free classes um, on Facebook. And it's, and it's going to be the 2017 Montana State Wood Show. Um, New Zealand Day, um, they're doing a uh, all-touch it's going to be touch rugby, and they're going to be teaching people about rugby and about how fun and wonderful it is just to play a sports that is basically um, never stops. It's one of those, it's like football, and it never really stops. So you guys can check that out. It's 10 a.m. at the Fort Missoula Rugby Pitch, um, and it's at the Fort Missoula Regional Park. It's a new area, and they have a whole area devoted to rugby. Um, and it's open for all ages, and it's happening from 10 a.m. to noon at the Fort Missoula Rugby Pitch. 
Um, there's no experience necessary, and it's touch, so you don't have to worry about hurting yourself or getting cauliflower ear. Um, <laughs> um, the thir there's a third annual bike swap at the Missoula County Fairgrounds commercial building. Aside from the wood carving competition, you can do a bike swap. Have you, do you have a bike or biking equipment that needs a new home, gear collecting dust in the closet, um, lo looking to trade in your um, trusty steed for a new cruiser, or just in the market for a new ride? So you can join them for that. It's happening um, Saturday, 10 to 4 p.m. Um, Sunday, 7, 10 to 4 p.m. So you can check that out. It's the Missoula County Fairgrounds bike swap. Uh, Lake County bike ride is going to be a 45-mile ride for starting at McCormick Park, the Lake County Develvo Development uh, um, Bike Ride w with Missoulians on bikes. Um, it's going to be a 45, it's going to be a carpool from McCormick Park at 8.45 a.m. Um, for a 10 a.m. start pre-line at Lake County Fairgrounds in Ronan, and they're going to basically ride their bikes all the way to Missoula from there. You got Garden City Brewfest happening at Karis Park. So once you guys are done with your farmer's market um, fun at the River Market, you guys can go to uh, the Missoula City Brewfest, and it starts at 12 o'clock noon um, tomorrow. And then you, you know, the admission is $15, which includes um, a glass, wristband, and three beer tokens. Uh, for $20, you can buy glass and seven tokens. Additional beer tokens are two for $3. Garden City Brew Fest will not, uh, would not po be possible without the sponsors. Many different brewing companies are going to be a part of it. So, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, Zoo Town, uh, okay, so there's another thing that's coming up. It's called Zombies in Zoo Town 2. Um, if you haven't already seen the first movie, it's on YouTube. It's called Zombies in Zoo Town. Um, Endeavor, which is a, a collective, it's basically kind of like a uh, food co-op, but for education. I call it an education co-op where a lot of homeschool parent kids um, come together for uh, an experience where they can teach each other and, and a learning space for students to make a sequel to last year's Zombies in Zoo Town. Um, and you can find out more information by go, uh, looking up Endeavor, which is E-N-D-V-R. Um, so you can look that up on Google to find out where you can find out more information. But it's going to be at the University of Montana. They're, they're doing a fundraiser, and they'll probably be showing the uh, first movie as well. Um, MissoulaEvents.net is going to be doing um, Tom Catmull will be at Ten Spoon Winery and Vineyard at uh, 6 p.m. The Frederico Brothers is going to be at 6 p.m. Aaron Buzaz at Imagination Brewing Company. Um, Andy Cigarettes, New Old Furniture, Edgar Allan Kubrick is going to be at Free Cycles. Latin Dance Nights are starting at Downtown Dance Collective at 8 p.m. Liquor Down Band, absolutely with Chris Moon, um, 406 at the Sunrise Saloon, Ida Ranch, Hands at the Union Club. Uh, let's see. Why can't, uh, there's a, another band, a reggae band, is going to be playing at the VFW. And then 20 Grand Rock Music is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. Thanks again for joining me for uh, Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. Come to our party. It's happening from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Downtown Dance Collective. So come join us. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.